guys. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the nut house. I'm going to do a little acorn with the same nut house on it. So uh, if you're watching the replay, say hello to me anyway. If you're definitely watching live, be sure to say hi. And you may be catching this uh, later on, like on YouTube or something like that. But So be sure to comment and say hello. Let's see if I can see myself yet and I can adjust the camera. So, looks not too bad. See my mess back there. <laughs> Sorry about that. My house, well, yeah, my house is a disaster, but especially the lower level where I do all my chalking um, as I'm getting ready for a show and the holiday season. I have transfers everywhere because I don't really put them away when I'm done. I'm still designing and working, so they're spread all over the place. And it took me forever to find the transfers I was wanting to work with tonight. So finally found everything I think will work. I kind of have a plan, but doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna go according to my thought in my head, but we'll give it a try. So say hello, hi Beverly. It says you're watching, I hope you are. Say hello to me and we'll get started. I'm going to uh, have to paint this first. These are actually two of the really thin acorn cutouts from Dollar Tree. I actually glued them together. They're still kind of drying, they're not quite pressed, but I just wanted them to be a little bit thicker. I don't know why, but I had this big, um, glass bowl that's got leaves and stuff on it sets in an easel and I was kind of thinking about putting this in the front of it so I just wanted to be nice and sturdy and still so it stand up well so uh, first thing I need to do is paint it and I'm still debating on everything these are kind of the colors that are in the bowl a deep brown kind of this pesto green curry color and it has a little bit of shimmery copper in it. So it's really pretty, it's upstairs. And uh, so I kinda wanna work with those colors, but on a lighter version, cause I, don't, I want it to stand out if it's sitting in front of that bowl, if that makes sense. So um, I'm just gonna do some water down. I think we'll start with some curry and kinda go up to brown. And then I may take, take this off. Well, I am going to take this off because I'm going to do it one pattern up here on the top of the acorn and a second pattern. Let me tilt this down a little bit on the lower part. A polka dot here and um, I'm kind of going to do a crisscross plaid on the top. That's kind of my plan. We'll see what happens. Nothing always goes according to plan necessarily. So um, let's get started. I'm going to get a paper towel. There's one here. I got my little flat paint brush in water because I like to just kind of whitewash this stuff. And sometimes I will, especially like when I do my door tags, which is wood, just like this, I whitewash it all out in the garage first, a whole bunch at the same time. But this is still raw, but I'm just gonna go right into the color. It may absorb it a lot without having that first layer of paint on it. So we'll see what it looks like. Just gonna go with the flow which is usually how I do everything. So, I'm just gonna add a little bit more water to my brush. And I just squirt the paint right on the brush. And I think I wanna do, go ahead and paint both sides. I may not do chalking on both sides, but I might want the color on both sides. If that makes sense. Just so it's not raw wood on the back. And it's gonna be on a sofa table, even though it's gonna be sitting in front of that big bowl. Um, I kinda want the back to be painted. So we'll paint both sides and see which one looks the best. So like I said, be sure to say hello if you're watching. It says I have 12 people watching, but no one has commented hello to me yet. I'm gonna leave this, I'm gonna kind of put brown up in here, but let's do the other side. 
and maybe the sides while that yellow dries. Usually I like to brush up. This is what, how I also paint, uh, painted my pumpkins or the Christmas trees if I wanted to change them color. I just water down some inexpensive craft paint on my brush and just brush it in. Because I still like to see the grain of the wood. So I kind of like whitewash it, I guess you call it. And of course, the more water you add to it, the thinner it gets and the more transparent it is. So I don't know how much this is really coloring there, not too much. So I'm going to um, take the blow dryer to it, I think. And then I'm gonna blend in some brown towards the top. Like I said, I know I'm no professional. Well, I technically I'm professional because I get paid for my designs that I sell, but I just learn as I go. What technique works best, what brush, how much water, you know? And so what that ne not necessarily what I do is the right way. It's just the way I do it. So I want to go ahead and blend that brown in to the gold. So I'm not even going to clean my brush. I'm just going to keep that yellow water on it. Paint. So this is a dark brown um, espresso bean by Anita's. I think I got, I don't know where I got it, either Walmart or Hobby Lobby. And this one was mustard. So hi, people are talking. Hello, Dolly. Hello, Natasha. Hello, Vicky. Karen. I'm from Ontario. Thank you, Natasha. And Vicky. Hi, Robin. Thank you so much for the book. You're welcome. I sent um, Vicky is a customer of mine. I sent her a catalog. Because who doesn't love to sit around looking at catalogs? I do. I used to do it all the time when I was buying for my store. That was my night job was to figure out what I wanted to buy in products to retail. So a little bit different catalogs than what most people look at, but I tried to get different companies and coordinate them all together with the products so I'd have an, my own look. I kind of wish this would paint better, the seam, but it's not. Okay, let's see if we can get a little bit more water in it and see if we can blend it a little bit better. So yeah, I don't really have a real Technique, this is it. I've just made it up as I started crafting, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let's blow dry that and then I can kind of lay it down. To... It also doesn't take long to dry when it's watery and thin. I gotta get my paper towel it blew off. Okay, so let's add some brown to the side. Hi, Rhonda. I 
just got these. It actually is two acorns. They're really thin wood. I got them at the Dollar Tree and I glued them together because I want it to be a little bit thicker. I don't really know why, but I did. I need a little bit more paint. We're going to put some polka dot on the lower part of the acorn and a striped plaid type look toward on the top part. I will tape it off with some painter's tape to separate the two patterns for chalking. And I'm probably just going to chalk the one side. I just kind of wanted um, the back side to be painted like the front side so I try not to have like brush strokes I try to get from the top down so everything looks smooth kind of cute I don't know which side I like better but I will rub uh, the stained wax on that and I think that will darken my edge because um, I can't seem to get the paint to stay on it, at least the thin paint. And I really don't want to take the time to do it. Okay. I think I'll do this side. So let's blow dry that so I can lay it flat. Okay. So. So when I get done chalking, um, I, we're going to do two patterns, the top, the bottom, and then I'm going to put nut house on it. And then I want to make a um, tassel tie out of um, jute. So we're going to do that later too and add a couple beads to the string. So we're going to do that too. So we got a lot to do, so let's get started. First we want to tape off where the top of the acorn would be so we can separate the two patterns. <clears throat> so we're probably going to do the polka dot first. So let's, so it would kind of slightly curve down probably. Hopefully it'll stick because this wet's, this uh, wood's kind of damp and doesn't want to stick. Of course not. I have to dry it more. So we'll see. Hi, Amy. Oh. 
little bit. We're going to lay the polka dot pattern down here in chalk. Polka dots. This is a big polka dot pattern. I just got this. I actually have not used it ever. Like, I've never had it before. My buffalo plaid, my mini buffalo plaid, my argyles. I'm on, I'm ready to start my third transfer of them because I wear them out. But this one I've never bought before. And it, so I've never designed with it. So let's see how sticky it is. If we need to fuzz it, or not, probably wouldn't hurt. I'm gonna just fold half of it over and lay the acorn on the paper and then lay the polka dot back on top of it. And I'm just putting tape here so I don't over paste onto the this part. And then I'll have to tape or watch it very carefully when I do the top part. So let's put a little fuzz on it. I don't know if you can see. Let me slide over. I need to bring my camera down a little bit. It's up there pretty tight. Let's see if it helps. I'm just putting the towel on top of the sticky transfer just to put a little bit of lint so it doesn't stick too hard to the acorn. I think we'll be okay. I'll probably want to do my lettering in the dark brown. So. I hope that fits now that I see it. I'm gonna use the word house from farmhouse and use the word nut from nutcracker to say nut house. And sometimes I feel like we live in the nut house. <laughs> you guys have that feeling? So it Probably can go, and I'm just gonna sit on the side, so I'm gonna put it on the side. Something like that. And there's the word nut. And I, I'll be fine if it overlet, like house overlays the word nut a little bit. So I think that'll all fit in there. We'll make it, we'll make it fit if it doesn't. Okay, so I think it'd be cool if half of the acorn was showing on the top. So I'm going to slide it down a little bit farther, if that makes sense. There, like that. You can kind of see part of the dots. Okay. Um... So the question is, what color are polka dots? Um, so if I do uh, if I do dark polka dots, then my lettering has to be light, so like a white or a near white, which I could do, or um, I could do dark dots or opposite. I could do a light dot with. I think I want to do a dark dot with light lettering. So I have this is an old color called chocolate. And I've used it all, but I continue to make the chocolate just by adding the um, bark with a little bit of black. So bark is our brown, current brown, which I don't have right in front of me. But, um, and then I just add a little bit of black. So I still have the deep dark brown color because I love that color of dark brown. Kind of like my Hershey, Hershey shirt color. Probably why I like the color of chocolate because I like Hershey's chocolate. <laughs> Are you with me on that, 
people. Hi, Martha. Hi from Florida. Hello, Jill. I'm new to your channel. Just wanted to say hi. Uh, hi, Jill. Where are you from? Where are you from? I can get my face on here. Hi, Cindy Williams. Love your videos. Thank you, Tabitha. Yeah, we're okay. So if you're just coming in, there's the wood acorn under here. I got it at Dollar Tree. I actually bought two of them and I glued them together because I wanted them to be a little bit thicker. And I don't really know why, but I did. And so then I white whitewashed it, color washed it with just these two craft paints in water. And if you missed that, you'll have to go back and watch the replay. And now we're going to put some polka dots on the lower part of the nut of the acorn. And then the top part, we're going to put like a crisscross plaid we're going to make. So I'm just chalking on my chocolate. Like I said, it's a discontinued color, but I continue to make chocolate with bark and black. Add a little bit of black at a time because it doesn't take much to, for it to have the effect of darkening the color. You can always add more. You can't take it back out. So a little at a time. All right, so I'm just scraping off the excess. Let's check out those polka dots. I put blue tape, painter's tape. So I have a nice definite line between the top of the nut and the bottom of the nut, okay? So there's the polka dots. And take that off. Okay, so we're gonna blow dry that and then we're gonna tape off this part and put the stripes on the top. And this I will wash later, my transfer. These big ones are kind of hard to, to manage in a small sink, but I like to fold it in half like this, with the sticky sides out. I'll pull it off of here, and then I'll rub this under running water. Get both sides wet, okay? Get both the sticky sides wet, but then just run it under water and rub that paste off as much as you can. And then if you have some counter space, just lay this right on the counter. Make sure the back is wet so it comes off your counter easy. Then just lay it down on your counter and take your board eraser, a wet one, and continue to wipe it off. In fact, I might try to just clean it right here real quick, at least so it doesn't stain so much. Our pigments will stain, which is no, I mean, that's no big deal if they stain, but you can see how easy it comes off. easier to do in the sink. Faster, I should say. But hey, I'll have this done and I'm gonna have to do it later. So, so I was gonna get all the top of the paste off, then I'm gonna flip it up and wipe off the paper underneath because it's still on its backer. Let's try to get as much off as we can and then we'll clean underneath it. In the meantime, our paste is drying on our nut, which is good. You can always blow dry it if you want to hurry to the next step. Okay, so let's peel this up, wipe these dots down, and we'll have the majority of it clean. I can always take a paper towel. Hi from Missouri. Hi, New York, Vancouver. Don't you just love it? Everybody just, you know, it's a Monday night. To me, today felt like Sunday. I don't know why. Yesterday felt like Saturday, I guess that's why. Okay, and I might try to wipe this sticky side a little bit. You don't want to rub it too much because you don't want to rub your sticky off. But see if I can just pick up some paste a little bit. back down, wipe 
wipe it up. And look, I got it pretty much clean without having to go to the sink, which is pretty nice. Well, I've never done that before, and that worked out pretty slick. Of course, I didn't use the whole transfer, so that helps. All right, let's lay this back so it can finish drying before I put it in the wrapper. Okay, back to our little acorn. So I color washed it with these two craft paints with the wet brush. Started out with the yellow, and then I came down with some brown. I am just gonna chalk the one side, but I wanted the back side to be painted, okay? So there's our little dots. And let's just hit them with the dryer real quick, and then I will put the tape on, and we'll try our little uh, stripey crisscross on the top. debating on colors for the top. I'm trying to say if I, I don't think I want to do a lot of color on it. I kind of want to keep it simpler, simple, not too distracting of colors. Because uh, earlier I was talking about how I'm going to set it from this, it's a big bowl and it sets in an easel on my sofa table. And it's mostly green, but has these colors in it, including the brown, fall leaves and whatnot. And I kind of just wanted to set it in front of the bowl on the easel. So, but I'm going to put the words nut house on it. <laughs> and if it doesn't look cute there, I'll just do something else with it. But when we get done with this, they're going to put the word nut house. Maybe I won't put the word nut house. I don't know. But then I want to make a little uh, jute tassel. And we're going to hang that on here. We'll add a couple beads to it. So I did those on my door tags, so I thought I'd show you how I do those. Also, okay, so here's my idea of using this stripe. Doing it one way and then doing it the other way. And I might just do it in brown. Hmm, can't decide. I don't think I want a lot of busy colors on it. We'll see. And the only way it's going to fit is diagonally. But I don't want it to be exactly straight across, so I want a little bit of funkiness to it, if that makes sense. But it's hard to cover the whole area without going straight across. So I might have to go straight across. Alright, I could do a mustard, the curry up here, and then my second stripe, going the other direction, I'll do in the chocolate. Alright, I think this is a new jar, so I'm going to show you uh, what they could look like when you get them. And you can see there's, I mean, you probably can't see, but the oils are kind of separating in here, so when we open it up, we'll need to mix it with a stir stick. That's normal. And this just peels off. And usually I have a little squeegee ready so I can scrape and save every minute ounce of paste. <laughs> so scrape that off. Get that right in there. Yep. All right. Uh, I got to throw that away. All right, so let's mix this up because it is kind of separated, which is fine. I always think it looks, I don't know why I think the paste looks yummy when it's nice and creamy. It's not like I eat it or anything, but it doesn't, it looks like pudding. Maybe a little thinner than pudding. This is just the right consistency you want. We don't need to add water to this. This is perfect. Our chalk paste does tend to dry as it ages. 
or if you don't seal it up tight. Even if you seal it up tight, it'll still just dry and you have to rehydrate it with water. And that's why we have a little spritz bottle of distilled water. Or as it just sets here, uh, it may start to dry. So just put a little water in it, mix it up. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna put the lid on that. Okay, so let's put a little mustard up here and see what that looks like. And then I wanna turn it and go the other direction. And I was thinking about doing a different color. Maybe dark chocolate, even though it's on the light brown. Or I might bring in that cream color because that's the color we're going to do the words with. So let's see what it looks like. No set plan. You just got to go with it. Could have used a bigger squeegee. Oh, we'll just work with this one. Yeah, it just spreads on. So you just gotta cover all the transfer. You want a nice thin coat. You gotta work quickly because it is chalk paste and it will dry. If it dries in your transfer, it'll stick in your transfer and it will not be on your surface. And that's a bummer because then you have to go back over it. So work quickly, scrape it down. You want a thin coat so you should be able to see your transfer under your paste as you make it nice and thin. Okay, don't leave it on thick. Peel this up. I'm gonna just lay that there. Okay, you can see it. It's very, just barely there, which I kind of like. It's not like screaming at ya. Hello, finally catch your, that's because I'm finally doing it in the evening. I'm really bad at doing them in the uh, lives in the evening. I'm here all day by myself, so usually I just do them during the day. And what do you think, iced coffee. That looks like a pretty color to add to our palette. Let's do iced coffee. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not on the evening much, which I should be because more people are watching in the evening. 29, that's amazing. I'm gonna wash this kind of like we just did the um, other one right here on the tabletop. Why not? Let's get this wet. This is our board erasers, which I use them more on transfers. Maybe they should be called transfer erasers. But we're just getting the paste off. And the paste just comes right out of the sponge which is pretty cool and I'm just getting it nice and wet so it picks it up because it's starting to dry on there and it will come off you just got to hydrate it to get it to come off and it doesn't have to be perfectly clean to work for the next level but when I try to get them as clean as I possibly can before I store them away. But now I'm just gonna get it dry, wiping all the moisture off. That's the sticky side, turn it over, wipe off the top, and that helps dry off the bottom. And you can always kind of blow dry it too to get the dampness off of it. Now I wanna turn it in the opposite direction of these stripes and go the other way. So that would be up and down. Or, let's see, like this. Okay, I forgot what I was doing. Okay, so I got all the wood covered. Stick that 
right on top. Get our iced coffee. This is one of our new colors, yummy colors. I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. There's little dots of pigment setting on the top and we wanna get a nice and evenly distributed. So another great consistency right there. It's ready to go. And let's get a clean squeegee. So these stripes are going up and down, whereas the mustard or the curry ones were going across. So we're making a plaid out of this little, this, this um, transfer comes in a set of four different patterns. I think this was in the holiday patterns. So it might've been snowflakes and little little pine branches maybe was with it. Um, I think in fa la 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 pattern, that repeated pattern. I think that this was part of that. I can look in my catalog thing when we're done. Okay, cool. Let's see what that looks like. Adorable. I'm gonna go ahead and just lay this in the water now and get it soaking. Clean that up. And now we can pull this off. And throw that away. You see it? I'm going to have to send you a PM to catch you up with my grand. Oh yes, please do that, Ashley. I caught wind of something going on with her, so yeah, let me know what's going on, Ashley. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna blow dry this. idea as I was going around that to take some um, twine I wish I had the thicker and glue it right on the seam and around the edge I think that would look cool separate that a little bit we'll see if all the words fit first okay um, I'm thinking I might lay a little bit of wax down on before I do my next layer Especially since this wood was raw and wasn't really um, treated first. I'm gonna do that. So I have my Min Wax finishing paste in dark. I have it in clear or natural also. You can use that. I like to use the dark just because it makes everything a little bit more dirty and vintage. <laughs> That's it. So I'm just gonna rub it on to seal in this paste. And that will help the transfer come up better without picking up the paste that I have on it. And we don't want any of our polka dots in our plaid to come up. So, hello Marilyn. I didn't see you. Anybody else I'm missing? Brenda? Tamitha? T Tamitha? Clean up. I know, cleaning up. I just, I do it as I go. That way it's not, usually I jump up and go, I have a sink right in the other room and I just clean as I go. Okay, so I, I like how this is looking. I'm getting very hot right now. The hot flashes are coming more and more often. Anybody can relate to that. Whew. Hello from Oregon. Hi, Lori. Okay, so I'm just gonna rub with a little bit more wax. I love the feeling of the paste after you wax. To me, it just, I don't know, just makes everything smoother and richer. 
the colors come out when you wax and it deepens them. But when we're done, then I'm gonna do good wax around this edge just because it'll darken it a little bit. It'll absorb into that unfinished wood. Isn't that cute? All right, let's see. Nut and farmhouse. Nut house, so I'm gonna use the house from the word. And I'm, I'm gonna set it in that um, easel, the big bowl that I'm gonna set this in front of. I was telling people earlier, um, has these colors. This pesto, copper, deep brown, um, kind of this curry color, maybe a little bit of pumpkin color. Um, it's huge, it's a big bowl and it sets in the easel and I'm gonna set this in front of it. And I, it would really be pretty just by itself, to be honest, I don't know. I, but I'm gonna put nut house on it anyway. And then when I get done with that, we're gonna make a tassel for this hole out of um, the t this jute twine. And I have a couple beads to string on it. So yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I haven't used my nutcracker transfer yet, so I'm gonna have to get it out and check it out. We're just gonna use the word nut because we're gonna say nut house from farmhouse and nut from son of a nutcracker. So nut, let's see how, how we're gonna do that. Your things are so stinking cute. <laughs> yeah, but I don't even know. I just dream them up. I don't know what to tell you. I'm hoping it'll set in there like this, like the curve will set in the curve. So I kind of want, I kind of want it, the word just to be at an angle a little bit. And then let's see, I don't mind if house is slightly over but it looks like I should be able to get it in there really well I kind of didn't want to go into this area so I want it to be just on the not on the cap of the net or what you call it the top of the net so nut house let's go for it I want it to set. Yeah, I think that'd be cute. I think I, I don't think I want it centered over the whole thing. No, because I'm going to use this color, so I don't want it to get lost in the plaid. So let's just, let's just do it on the polka dot side. All right, we're going to use our iced, was it iced mocha or iced coffee? Iced coffee. FYI, I used to have a coffee house. Half of my store was a coffee house that I had in Centerville, Iowa for, well, I was in retail for nearly 20 years and I had my store called Tangleberries since 2007. And in 2008, we opened up the coffee side where we not only had coffee drinks, fruit smoothies, um, all that stuff, we served lunch and we made fudge and I am not a coffee drinker, but I had a coffee business. Pretty crazy. All right, let's lift that up. Nut, stick that in there. Blow dry that and get my papers out of the way because they always want to blow all over. I remember when it was the attic. Yeah, well, the attic was the store that I joined. We joined together. I was at Bradley Hall, and my business was actually called Robin's Nest. And then I joined a store called The Attic down in the square, and that's when we became Tangleberries. And then the gal who had the attic retired out of retail, and um, so I would, became the sole owner of Tangleberries, and that was just like a year after we became Tangleberries and then I moved, I bought my own building and I moved to a double storefront building and uh, brought my gift side in one side and then made the coffee shop side on the other side and we opened it up. Then the following year we went upstairs and gutted out those apartments and rebuilt them 
exposing the old brick and the wood floors and we uh, furnish those apartments and rent them out as hotel suites three of those above my store and I uh, still do that I still have the building but I closed my business when uh, I closed the coffee shop and gift shop when we moved to Omaha two years ago so in a nutshell <laughs> into retail over in Valley, Nebraska, where I sell my Odessa Rose Creates designs. And then I'm doing a little bit of retailing there also. So let's put the word house on here. I hope this shows up. It's pretty, um, not a lot of contrast between the colors, so let's see what it looks like. You always want to think about the contrasting of your back color, your negative space, to your positive space, which is your chalking design. And you want it to show up well. I was a 4-H leader for 16 years and loved doing projects with my kids, home improvement or uh, art design type projects. I keep getting paste on me. All right, let's put this up. Cute. Can everybody see it in that house? I think when uh, I add the dark wax, it'll also bring it out a little bit, maybe. Try and decide whether to, to go with a lighter color or just leave it. It's kind of cute. Let's blow dry it. How did you learn to see designs before you make them? Is it just natural talent? Not something you can learn. I'm guessing that it, I hate to say that I have that talent, but yeah, I just see them in my head for the most part. And then I kind of fudge it as I go, I guess. But yeah, it's hard to teach that. You, I don't know what to tell you, but... I guess it's just my thing. Everybody has their thing. Well, there I did it again. Let's, let's see how messy I can get this brand new jar of paste. All right, I'm gonna throw this stuff in the water because I think we're done chalking. And always try to scrape down your sides, insides of the paste so they don't dry out so fast. One more. My chocolate. I make my chocolate. Chocolate used to be a color. Now they have bark, which is a lighter brown. So I just keep making chocolate by adding a little bit, putting bark in it, and then add a little bit of um, black. A little. Add a little at a time to get it to the shade that you want. Cool. Um, we will want to wax that, but let's go ahead and start our, um, tassel. I'm going to go ahead and I think I want to add the natural. I have some beads that I haven't painted yet because all I have painted yet is one green one and I had a brown one. I have something. What is it? Where did it go? Of course I've lost him. I 
had like two beads down there. Pretty sure one of them was brown. Because now I don't really want to add the green. Hmm. Where did he go? Frustrating. There he is. So we have a brown one, and I think I'll put, maybe I'll just put the brown one on. I don't know if I want the green with it. Decisions, decisions. Okay, so I happen to have found this square metal lid. I went to a Ritz Cracker tin. Actually, I stole it from my husband in his garage. I think he had like nuts and bolts in the tin, but I needed something sturdy and about this size. So I stole it from the garage. We'll see how long it takes for him to miss it. So basically you wrap twine around. You wanna have a piece ready to um, tie it off. So if I want something longer than that, I'll just cut a longer piece. So I have a piece ready. And then, so you can use a piece of cardboard, as long as it's really sturdy, especially if you're gonna make a bunch of tassels. But I just use this metal piece because then I know it's gonna not wear out or bend on me. So I got the first string down to the bottom and then you just hold on to that and you just start wrapping it around a lot. Oh, I know what I was gonna do. But forgot my step here. You lay this across the top, your extra little piece, because that's going to be inside your top of your tassel. Okay, so just keep wrapping. I'm trying not to get that in there. Okay. So this just depends on how big of a tassel you want, how thick or how, you know what I mean? How round or big of a tassel you want. So just keep going around and around. I like to use a little bit thicker twine, but I, brought, I bought the wrong size last time. This is okay, especially for my big door tags. But for the size of a sign, I think it's the perfect thickness. I'll just keep wrapping. Okay, we'll say that's what we want. And then you got your string here across the top. Okay, so tie that in a knot. And then this last string here, come down to the bottom. Cut it. Okay, then you got your top here. Now go ahead and cut the bottom, across the bottom. Keep it folded in half, okay? So now you got the start of your tassel. And then this, you want to tie in a knot at the top. Okay, now we gotta wrap twine around this part, right? So you have that little wrap going around it. And then we will trim this all off even if you want. Okay, so grab another string or just use this. And then I like make this loop. So I bring it down here and put this loop up here and then hold on to it and then just start wrapping around. I don't think you see it. So get this out of the way. But pull this tight and you just start wrapping it around. Oop. Sorry, I'm trying to show you, but so you got this loop and you got the tail down here. And then you're gonna just bring this up and start wrapping around. 
pulling it tight. Get that guy out of the way. Okay, so wrap. You can see where it's starting to make that area. Okay, then when you got as much as you want around there, cut this string off. And then you stick it through this loop. Okay, hold on to it. And then you're gonna pull that tail, and it pulls that loop, and it pulls that string through it. Ugh, through it like that, okay? There. And then you could just leave it like that, or you could try to pull it all the way through and get it down in a tight knot. Or you can just cut them off, really. It's usually, in there pretty tight it should stay tight so just cut that piece off and then get all these together and this came from the loop that we just pulled through and then just trim all this off so you have a nice even tassel and usually I just do this over the waste basket So now we have a tassel. Woo! I hope you all could see that. My husband has so much stuff in his shed, he did. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? They don't know. Okay, so here's my tassel. Boop, boop. And here we got it tied on the top. Okay. So with this one, I think I just want it hanging down. So I might just put um, a couple of the beads or maybe just the one bead on. Had the time. Well, I could paint one mustard. I think that would look cute too. And then we're going to hang it on there. Should I put a mustard one on? The mustard one would be cute. Okay, well, I may add a mustard one later. But how to get these strings in this little hole? I came up with the idea of using this needle, which I made out of floral wire. So it's kind of a stiff wire. Okay, folded it in half. Let me see if you can see that. Okay, so I'm making a needle. So I just put the strings in it, like you're threading a needle, and then you just close these wires together, okay? So you have it threaded. You see that? And then we're just gonna poke this wire through the hole And bring the strings through with it. Okay, now you got it in the hole. Okay, so now you can just tie this in a knot or something. I'm just going to loop it because I may add a mustard bead after I get one painted. So I'm just going to kind of do it loosely. But make a, make a knot. You might want to do two knots. And then you can always leave this or trim it or cut it off, whatever. And then you're gonna have a tassel on your acorn. Super cute. There, okay, and I'm gonna wax this too. So there it is. I think it'll be cute with a uh, mustard bead on there. I, I call it mustard, but it's curry. Or you can use this paint and they call this mustard. So I'll probably just use this paint on one of those unfinished beads and add it to this. So I'll have two beads and a tassel. And then I'll bring it up tight so it kind of sticks out when I set it. Okay, so let's just add a little bit of wax and we'll be done. Again, I'm using the Min Wax Paste Finishing Wax. And take, I just use an old t-shirt I cut up. And get some of that on your rag. And rub it on. We rub most of it on. We just need to do the letters now. You kind of have to get up close to read it, which is fine because I didn't want it to like be totally obnoxious <laughs> in front of my really beautiful bowl. But I think it's gonna look cute. Okay. And like I said, I talked about. Yeah, I can wax these sides and it darkens up the sides, so 
fine, I'll do that later, but yep, that works. So let me just paint another bead and we'll add that to that. And then I will take a picture of it in front of my bowl so you all can see it. So thanks for watching guys. And I'll chalk with you later. Bye. Did you paint the back of your, oh, did you paint the back of your, yes, I did. I painted both sides. And I do that um, earlier. You'll have to go back and watch it to see how I did that. So thanks guys, bye.